Did you know that a Thomas the Tank Engine movie set in World War II was supposedly in production? In 2009, Hit Entertainment announced they'd be making a theatrical Thomas movie for an audience beyond the preschool demographic. The movie would have been directed by Shane Acker, known for the movie Nine, and written by the duo of Chris Fiscardi and Will McGraw, as well as Josh Klausner, known for his work on Shrek the Third. The movie would be majority live action, with some CGI effects done by Watt Digital. According to Acker, the movie would revolve around their boy who has become distant with his father, learning to reconnect with him after discovering the island of Sodor. Klausner stated over Twitter that the movie would take place during World War II, but other than that, not much is known about the movie. It was originally slated for late 2010, but was pushed back to spring of 2011 and then 2012, and then nothing was heard about the movie after that. Neither the cast or the official title of the movie was revealed. The only thing we got was a teaser image of a realistic looking Thomas the Tank Engine with the text arriving soon. It's likely that the movie never made it that far into production and was eventually cancelled, but nothing has been confirmed. This would have been Thomas's second theatrical movie, with the first being Thomas and the Magic Railroad. This film released in July of 2000, and while fans of Thomas enjoyed it, it was not well received. It garnered several negative reviews and barely managed to break even at the box office. Most of the film's problems stem from its pacing and overall story. Critics often point out how scenes with Burnett Stone, played by Peter Fonda, seem to slow down the movie and darken the mood, while the story is rather convoluted. At least a few of these problems can be attributed to the last minute edits made to the film. Because of negative feedback from a test screening, the film was heavily edited to become more interesting to the audience. Director Britt Allcraft's original script, which can be found at the Soder Island fansite, depicts several things that don't happen in the finished product. The story was supposed to be told by an adult Lily to her child, and a second antagonist named P.T. Boomer was supposed to appear in the film. Boomer was Burnett's rival and was cut from the film for being too scary. There is leaked footage of the film's final act that shows off Boomer, played by Doug Lennox, before he was cut. This footage reveals that most of Boomer's traits and motives were given to Diesel 10 in the final version. In 2008, Thomas began its transition to CGI, starting with the 12th season. This season saw the faces of the models being animated over using CGI animation, allowing for the characters for the first time to naturally emote and speak. This season acted as the transition period, as in the 13th season, Thomas would be fully animated in CGI. The animation was handled by Nitrogen Studios, who would continue to provide animation until the 17th season, where art productions took over. The reason for the change, according to Christopher Scala, executive producer and hit, was to refresh and update these lovable characters in CGI and take Thomas into a new era. To justify the change, an episode of Thomas was fully animated in CGI and then shown to a focus group in which they responded positively. Even some people who were against the idea of CGI Thomas eventually came around after seeing the episode. The footage was leaked in 2008 and revealed to be the episode Thomas and the Stinky Cheese. Interesting enough, the test footage shows Thomas emoting using his whole body, which is very similar to how Thomas was animated starting in the 22nd season. Although season 12 started the change of CGI, it was not the first time it was used. In the season 6 episode Percy Chocolate Crunch, CGI was briefly used to simulate steam. However, this is the only instance of CGI being used prior to the 12th season. Part of the reason they switched to CGI may have been the cost of production. The 12th season of Thomas Alone cost 2.5 million pounds or 3.1 million dollars to produce. This accounts for the custom made locomotives, rolling stock, and sets. Each model was made from a gauge 1 scale Markland engine and had to be fitted with a custom body to match their storybook appearance. Clay faces, radio controlled eye mechanisms, and steam pumps were also added to amplify the realism of the trains. The process for building these models usually took around 6 weeks. Each production needed a number of sets built, ranging from simple run by sets to major set pieces. Filming would cost £10,000 an hour, so to conserve time and money, multiple sets would be filmed simultaneously, with all the necessary scenes for the set being shot at once. CGI eliminated the need for physical props and allowed for episodes to be produced in a shorter span of time. A few of the retired set pieces and models can be found at Drayton Manor Theme Park in the Discover Thomas and Friends exhibition. The television series is based off the books written by the Reverend Wilbur Audrey. Producer Brett Allcroft initially met Audrey while working on a project about steam railways, and after reading his books, jumped at the opportunity to turn his books into a television series. Production of the first season began in 1981 and took three years to complete. 
David Minton was brought on as director, Ringo Starr was the narrator, Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell were the composers, and Wilbur Andre himself served as the technical consultant. The first episode of Thomas and Friends, Thomas and Gordon aired October 9, 1984 on CITV and was a major success. The series received much acclaim and recognition, being nominated for a British Academy Television Award in 1985. This success warranted the production of a second season, covering more of Audrey's books. The first two seasons followed Audrey's stories very closely, however in the third season they started to deviate from the books. Thirteen of his stories from the books were loosely adapted, with the rest being written by Alcroft, Minton, and Andrew Brenner, writer for the Thomas and Friends magazine. Audrey was not pleased with this and publicly announced his disapproval. He believed the stories lacked realism and forced Thompson to the spotlight. An episode he particularly had a problem with was Henry's Forest, which saw Henry the Green Engine stopping to admire a forest. Wilbur points out that this occurrence would never happen on a railway, as it breaks Rule 55, a rule that required a crew member of the train to inform the signalman of their presence on the track. A good portion of Wilbur and his son Christopher's books were never adapted. The fifth season strayed away from the books and began to use original stories. Min has said in an interview that season 5 was supposed to be a showcase for the movie, and that he was told to ignore the budget and be as creative as possible. Some of the stories weren't adapted because of their confusing plots or lack of action, like in the case of the story The Missing Coach, which was cancelled partway into production. Other stories just weren't easily merchandisable, like the mountain engine stories, which featured engines that climbed mountains using a special set of rails. Because of their unusual design and function, they weren't seen as marketable, and the stories were never adapted. Some stories, however, would eventually see the light of day, as in the 20th season, the stories Tick for Tad, Mike's Whistle, and Useful Railway were adapted, being the first railway series stories to be adapted in 22 years. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon to stay notified whenever I upload a video. Hey guys, it's Ben, and for the longest time, I've been an avid fan of Thomas the Tank Engine. As a kid, I've had all sorts of Thomas toys and books, and I still have some of those even today. In fact, I think my most valuable possession is my complete collection of Audrey stories. For all those who are interested, there are links in the description of the video to all the sources I use to research this video.